Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Sunday. All right, let's talk some mountain weather. My first thing is a pretty amazing stat here today. Just happened to be looking at Jay Peak's uh, website and noticed they're up to 185 inches so far this season and counting. As far as I know, that beats all Western resorts in the United States. It is an incredible stat. Just uh, for interest, Alta is currently at 51 inches for the season. Jackson Hole is at 104. Vail is at 40. I think Loveland's at like 61. Uh, Wolf Creek's in the 50s. Mammoth now at 40. I mean, absolutely incredible. Well done. There is additional snow in my forecast for a lot of uh, Jay Peak. Um, all right, let me take you to uh, radar here this morning and show you what we've got. So this is just the start of our next storm system, the one that will likely start to shift the pattern on or after 1216. And that still is the case. I know I've been mentioning that the last two or three days. Um, that still looks to me like that, that that's going to be the case. Here's water vapor, the big view across the west, and freezing levels right now are still high. In fact, all the way through tomorrow, we're still looking at probably rain snow lines up to 9,000 feet across a lot of the west. The rich flow continues into this area, but what you're starting to see now, there's our area of low pressure dip in the flow, is this low is starting to influence things. It's still pushing moisture in, but once the bulk of this low comes in on 1216, somewhere right in there, 1217, that will start to pull in colder air behind the low. We'll start to get that, that counterclockwise flow with the dip in the jet stream, and that's what we really need. Here are my bullet points this morning. Here's what I'm looking at. So up to 9,000 feet uh, with the rain snow line. We talked about that through tomorrow. Here, here's the pattern shift. Nothing has really changed with this since yesterday. It's going to occur in the Pacific Northwest on or after 1216. And then by 1217, it starts to spread into the interior Rockies um, with the rain snow line dropping significantly because colder air will push it to lower elevations. Here are the best odds of accumulating snow for Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. So for example, in Colorado, by the afternoon evening of 1217, light to moderate snow accumulations. Uh, start to enter the picture. Light on 1218, light to moderate on 1220. Overall, when I think of Colorado in this pattern, I'm not totally sure how deep the pattern is going to make it. I think it will make it into Colorado. I just don't know how much moisture will make it, as opposed to a lot just to the north into Wyoming. Even the, the Wasatch, I think we're probably going to see a bit more than what we're going to see in Colorado. So it, it, it we'll see. It, it may be uh, that it makes it in there, just not huge totals. Utah, moderate to heavy 1217, light 1218, moderate to heavy 19, 20, and 21. So you can see the difference. There's a definite difference between those locations. Um, let me show you the forecast. Uh, let me pull up this uh, forecast radar here. Okay, let me uh, transition over. So we'll start this up at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time today, Sunday, December 14th. Again, there's your moisture in the, uh, the Pacific Northwest. All right, let me move this ahead. All right, here we are at the 5 p.m. Mountain Standard today. Here's 5 a.m. Mountain Standard on Monday. Uh, here's uh, there's 10 p.m. Mountain Standard on Monday. Notice the precip just starting to trickle down into the, uh, uh, the central, uh, the Rockies there across uh, Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. So let's move ahead and see what happens with this. Here we are, 5 a.m., on Tuesday, Mountain Standard Time, December 16th, just a touch makes it down um, into the uh, into like Utah. I mean, that is so small. Um, here we are, 11 a.m. December 16th. This is really the key day, right? This is the transition day, the 16th. There's 5 p.m. and look what happens here. By 5 p.m. on the 16th, Mountain Standard, we've already got precip starting to roll south into the uh, the Sierra. It's a good sign. Um, okay, let's go 5 a.m. So here we are, 5 a.m., Mountain Standard on Wednesday, December 17th. So I talked about how the 16th is a transition day. Then we start to see the effects roll into the Central Rockies by the 17th. And this is early on the 17th. And look at the precip in California, Nevada, the Wasatch, Central to Northern Mountains of Colorado, the Tetons, Idaho, and Montana. And colder air will be sweeping in. Um, behind all this, pushing 
the snow to lower elevations. I think we've got one more in here. Yeah, here we are, 11 a.m., Wednesday, December 17th. Um, so precip over spreading the Rockies. Let me show you the, uh, the forecast uh, pressure anomalies. So these are up in the middle of the atmosphere, up at about 18,000 feet. This is Wednesday, uh, December 17th. Look at the change. A little bit of a dip here in the, uh, the jet with lower than normal pressure starting to take over. So all this evolves. This starts up here, and then it moves to the south. And that's what we're seeing. Very slow evolution, but notice it doesn't get all the way down into southern Colorado, southern Utah, New Mexico, Arizona. It just doesn't make it by the 17th. That's why I was talking about the depth of this pattern. And here's this is even better. 1220, you can see how here's your storm track, like right in here. The battleground. Lower the normal pressures up to the north of that, higher the normal pressures to the south. It doesn't look to me like it makes it really deep into Colorado or deep into Utah, though it does make it into the Wasatch to some degree. But the the biggest snows are all going to be up here, where you see Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, the Pacific Northwest, BC. That's where you've got the lower than normal pressures uh, firmly in charge. This is Christmas, the morning of Christmas, essentially. Higher than normal pressures out here. And this actually does indicate some falling or lower than normal pressures across the northern Rockies and also off the west coast. So essentially colder than normal air over there with some snow and also off the, off the west coast. This pattern would support snow uh, across the northern Rockies, maybe into parts of the central Rockies and of course the west coast. But let me show you the contrast on Christmas morning. So this is your AI interpretation of that, and then we just looked at the operational. What you don't want to see is this one. This would be, this would preclude a lot of snow for Christmas. This would be more of a green Christmas for a, and a warm Christmas, because the only falling pressures are out here across the West Coast. This is not perfect on the operational, but at least it's got lower than normal pressures across the northern, central and northern Rockies. This would be a much better solution if you like snow and cold than this one. So we'll see how it plays out. We'll keep looking at it every single day. All right, looking at the, um, we'll peek into the atmosphere here for um, the atmospheric river. This is effective up here around the Oregon, Washington coast at 46 degrees north latitude. Three storms, right? Here comes one, two, and three. So this one's 14 into 15, 16. Second one, 16, 17. The other one's 18, 19 um, in the Pacific Northwest. Each one is at least moderate intensity as far as integrated vapor transport or atmospheric river potential intensity there. So three storms um, will eventually change the pattern, force the rain snow line down as the jet buckles and we get colder air. Here's total precip over the next eight days. And there's a lot of precip. When you see these magentas, um, that's eight, nine, ten inches of liquid. This is as if everything fell as liquid through the course, through the close of business on the 22nd. A lot of precip indicated here in central and northern California, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, the Tetons, and to some degree dropping down into the Wasatch, although this looks to favor extreme northern Utah, but there's still some that makes it into the Wasatch. Let's look at the southwest. Um, no, you know what? Let's look at that as a 10 to 1. Uh, eight, eight to 8 day total snow, 10 to 1 ratio. So deep purple is going to be at least 6. Bright pink is at least a foot. And the whites, that's at least 2 feet. And there's a lot of white here. BC, Cascades, Volcanoes, Washington, Oregon, uh, up around Shasta, maybe over the 13ers and the 14ers in the uh, the High Sierra. Um, Idaho's got some of the white parts of northwest Montana, the Tetons, extreme northern Utah. All right, let's look at the uh, total precip across the southwest. Notice very dry initially, and then the dam breaks. <laughs> After the 16th, 17th, and we start to see precip run down the Sierra and, of course, into Utah and Colorado. How does that look as snow? 10 to 1 ratio, 8-day total snow. Again, potentially what you're seeing here with these whites, that's over the 13ers and the 14ers there. 
uh, the highest peaks in the high Sierra. I'm not sure how much is going to fall around Tahoe. I think it might be just, we'll see. I, I think it could be like a 6 to 12 inch snow. We'll have to wait and see. Um, my numbers. So between today and tomorrow, so these are grand totals by the close of business on 12-15. So this takes care of the next couple of days. It's all up here. It's all up here in BC, Pacific Northwest, and Alberta, where it's been, essentially. And there's nothing. It's way too warm up here otherwise. And bone dry for the uh, Intermountain West, Intermountain Rockies, Utah, Colorado. So that's phase one. Here's phase two. So there's 1216 through 1222. These are grand totals by the close of 1222. Let me show you again. Phase one, phase two. Some big numbers here. So um, yesterday we went with I went with the extreme case, the most optimistic snow forecast. Today, this is uh, this is more of my choosing. This is more um, I, I think more realistic as to where we could end up. Um, so we'll start in the Sierra. Like I said, Tahoe, probably, I mean, it's a little bit in question just because we'll have to wait and see where the rain snow line is because you're probably going to be right on that line um, with the coldest air kind of remaining up here north of this line. But we'll see. Mammoth, potentially a foot, and, and areas above tree line in the high Sierra will get a lot more. I've got potentially 6 to maybe 14 over the Wasatch. Uh, and Utah and Colorado are kind of, like I said, in the same boat. We'll see how deep this pattern makes it into Utah and Colorado. 4 to 10, central to northern mountains of Colorado. I definitely think 2 feet is very reasonable for the Tetons. You can see that with the bright pinks. That's at least a foot to 2 feet. I've got uh, quite a bit up here in Montana. I've got uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 inches, essentially up here in Montana. Um, easily 10 to 20 up here in Idaho through Brundage. I mean, even Sun Valley could make out with this. Uh, Schweitzer's looking good. Great numbers up here through interior BC and Alberta. I've got one to two feet, maybe even three feet over Revelstoke. And still looking at big numbers up here in the Pacific Northwest, potentially one to what is that, five feet of snow accumulation through Baker, Whistler, Stevens, Crystal, Timberline. And this is what we need. We need a change of fortune because for the last solid week, it has been way too warm and all rain for Timberline, Bachelor, Crystal, the Baker, Heather Meadows ski area. It's been way too warm for those areas. Stevens Pass. Now we'll bring in some colder air with this, 16 through 22. <laughs> Okay, looking at the northeast, got uh, two or three different clippers here uh, and some lake effect off Ontario, Erie, and Michigan, and maybe even a little bit of a coastal low right there. But um, let me show you what I'm thinking up here in the northeast as far as total snow. So grand totals through 1222. By the close of business, I've got uh, 8 to 10 up here, Jay Peak, Tremblant, Snow Ridge, White face over to Mount Washington. That's where the bulk of the accumulation is going to be. So we could add another 10 to J Peak's impressive 185. Um, three to six down here, southern Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, Maine, and Massachusetts there. Guys, let's end on the big western map again. There's phase one, but what's most exciting is the 16th through the 22nd. Now, in the coming days, I'm going to start to push this forecast out closer to Christmas. So we'll see what that holds, but this is going to be a great period. This is this is at least we have something that looks promising versus where we've been for the past week. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.